be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe, wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and to the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. 
All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself. 
sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, my husband John and I were visiting Mexico, and one day we kayaked out into the ocean where we were able to look down into a very deep and very dark cenote, a, a hole in the ocean floor. And I was afraid. I looked down in that hole and I had no idea what was down there. And I wasn't about to find out myself. <laughs> but as the sunlight penetrated the ocean and the guides for our journey dove down into the hole, we could all of a sudden see a vast array of sea creatures, mostly fish, in a rainbow of color. Colors that were invisible in the dark, but were radiant in the light. I imagine it was something like that for the women who came to the tomb that day. They looked inside that dark tomb and they saw nothing. They were frightened. They thought they should have been able to see something, but they saw nothing. They'd come to prepare Jesus' body for burial, and he was not there. Had he been stolen? Had someone already moved the body? It wasn't until they looked the other way, into the light, that they could hear the words of that strange young man who stood there. He's not here, he's risen. Do not be alarmed. Do not be afraid. It wasn't until they turned away from the darkness of the tomb and into that light that they could understand that God's glory had been manifested in a resurrected Christ. It wasn't until I could turn away from the dark and look into the light that I saw the glory of the sea around me. And it's not until we look away from the darkness of our lives, from the darkness of our world, that we can see the truth of who Jesus is and understand the gift of the resurrection. In the days that were leading up to Easter, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the church trods a straight path into the darkness into the darkness of the world's suffering, the world's injustice, into our own sinfulness. And that liturgical week is meant to lead us directly into the tomb, to confront the evil in the world and confront that which lies within each and every one of us. 
were confronted with the reality of pain. And then we hang that pain along with Christ on the cross and seal the truth in a tomb until until this third day the day that Jesus talked about so often on the third day Jesus was no longer in that tomb of worldly sin and pain. On that third day, the bonds of death had been broken by Jesus for all of us. The bonds that hold us in chains on earth are broken this day, and we are freed to live as people of the resurrection. Does that mean that evil no longer exists? Absolutely not. Suffering still exists. Death still exists. But our Easter promise is that Christ's light shines in and through the world's darkness through and into our hearts. It's the reality that is beyond the reality of this world. And it allows us to proudly say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And then, and then, this is not the end of our celebration, but the very beginning. This is the day of new birth. When we take that truth of Christ's resurrection and live it, we must live lives not gazing into the darkness of the world's pain, not into the darkness of the empty tomb. We're not called to lament the brokenness of the world. We're certainly not called to live in fear. And many of us do lament the evil of this world, and we are afraid. But today, we say no to that fear. And we say yes to life in Christ. We must transform the darkness of the tomb, break it open with the light of Christ's resurrection, and that means that we must take seriously that what that means for us, why we're here today, is because we really can change the world. If we believe ourselves to be transformed through God's love, then we can transform the world. It may be as simple as a smile to the person who served us our coffee this morning. Or it may be as big as leading a revolution of love. Whatever it is, if we take seriously what has happened to Jesus, if we take seriously what that means for us, and if we take seriously our baptismal vows, those promises that we made or that were made on our behalf to live 
as a community of faith, then through our transformations, we are strengthened to do the work of Christ. We are strengthened to gather together, to pray, to worship, to study, and then to go out into the world and respect every human being and all of creation and to work for justice and peace in all we do. Those are the promises that were made at our baptisms. It is up to us to follow through. And we can't do it alone. We can only do that as a community. There are days when you will wake up and say, I can't do this anymore. I can't face the world with a big smile on my face today. My bones ache. My homework's not done. My grades are in the dumper. I can't do this. And that's okay. Because next to you stands someone, another person of faith, who this day says, I can. And that person will look into your eyes and say, I can do it with you. We're in this together. The tomb is empty. The word is out. We are Christ's light in the world. Alleluia! Christ is risen. You can do better. Hallelujah! The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And it's time to break into our eggs and see chocolate. <laughs> Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten. Prayers of the people. God of love, we rejoice with angels and all the host of heaven as we celebrate the resurrection of your son. Bless today's joyful celebration and turn our hearts to you with new delight and commitment. We, we praise, praise you, almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
God of mercy, bring your church to new life. Awaken in us a faithfulness that manifests itself in joy, in dedication to work of reconciliation in the world, in care for your creation, in all of your glory. We, we praise you, you, almighty God. God. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. God of wholeness, bring those who suffer to new life. We pray for those who bear the burden of pain and anxiety, whose relationships are shattered, whose lives are full of despair. Lead us to find ways to be present with them and reflect your love for them. We, we praise you, you, almighty God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. God of light, bring those in authority to new life in the ways they lead their nations. Show them the path of integrity and truth that their people may live in peace, that all may have plenty. We, we praise, praise you, you almighty God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. God of eternity, we give thanks for those who have gone before us and have entered into a new and everlasting life in your presence. We, we praise, praise you, you, almighty God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Risen Lord, hear our prayers and grant them as may be best for the newness of the life of the world. All this we ask in your glorious name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You're invited to share the peace of Christ with one another. visited churches, but it's true. So you have Easter eggs hidden, not very hidden, but placed around the sanctuary. They are for you all, so please enjoy them and um, have a happy Easter. Uh, and come back. Any other announcements, Ben? Uh, Jenny? Yes, just real quick.
And I will be, for those of you who are not familiar with, with my schedule, I will be shooting out of here, uh, actually, during the final hymn, uh, which my mother always got really mad at me for doing when I was little. But um, I go over to Newark and do a service over there at 10.30, so I apologize for not being able to greet you after the service. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. to invite all believers in Jesus Christ to this communion table, regardless of religious tradition. And also make it known that we do have gluten-free hosts for anyone who would desire that. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he is one for us, everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. 
Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption. O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of of our the body and the blood of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and in him, and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not to the condition, but to give us to the evil. For the mind is the kingdom, and the power, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food and the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Your Christ, our Lord. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us God's children through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessings. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who brought us out of bondage to sin, into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you forever.